Hey guys, I'm Rashi Hamalio and today I am going to be ranking for you my top favorite foundations. I've been receiving quite a few requests as to what my top favorite foundations are and so we are going to talk all about that today. Now let's start off with number five and we'll move on to my absolute holy grail in number one place. So for fifth place, my favorite foundation is the Bobbi Brown Skin Long Wear Weightless Foundation. It, the name can be quite confusing in these. There's a, a Bobbi Brown Skin Foundation and then there's the Bobbi Brown Long Wear Skin Foundation. So I have the Long Wear one and this is the shade W058 Golden Natural. First of all, the shade is amazing it's not really an olive foundation i do have an olive undertone but i don't find that this has olive tones this has more of that neutral to golden yellow undertone it's not too golden it's not too warm it's just perfect now apart from that this is a matte foundation so if you don't like matte foundation this is not going to be for you i have combination skin so i enjoy wearing matte foundations whether it's during summer or during winter the finish of this is definitely more of a foundation finish if you know what i mean it's not a a natural looking foundation or very skin like foundation you will see foundation on your face but it will look flawless like it has a beautiful full coverage matte finish that doesn't look flat or anything like that it's, it's also very good in terms of longevity it lasts all day on me i can wear it right up to eight hours and it doesn't look like it oxidizes it i will get a little bit of settling in my fine lines or my mouth area but that's normal for me to be honest, all foundations settle in my laugh lines a little bit. The ones that settle a lot, I generally don't purchase. It's great for the oily areas of my skin. It kind of helps to keep that oil in check, but it also isn't bad for my dry areas. So I have normal skin in the Prairie de Morat face and I get a little bit of dry around my mouth. So when it comes to matte foundations, I have to make sure that it's not a drying matte foundation or it's not a type of foundation that's going to really dry out this part of my face and this one doesn't do that. So love it. The only caveat with this is I do believe this has some fragrance. I don't think it has any alcohol but I'll confirm right here. The fragrance kind of smells like lavender if you don't really like the scent of lavender. It's quite strong, um, maybe skip it. Now in fourth place, it is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. And my shade is 7.75. I have done a whole video on this, so if you haven't seen it, go check that out. Now, I don't have the Giorgio Armani Foundation with me right now. I'm actually planning on purchasing it, but I will tell you, it's an amazing foundation. Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk really lives up to the hype in my opinion. I loved it. It has a gorgeous smoothing finish on the skin and yet the texture of the foundation is really lightweight. It's different to the Bobbi Brown. The Bobbi Brown is a bit more creamy whereas the Armani is a very fluid, very watery, almost lightweight foundation and yet it has a lot of coverage. You can easily go from sheer to full coverage with Armani just because of how fluid and buildable it is. It also has a gorgeous smoothing finish on the skin. It lasts all day. It doesn't really oxidize. I've heard from some of you and you've mentioned that the Armani oxidizes. On me, I haven't noticed that. The shades that I've tested in the past with Armani and I wore that foundation every single day. I particularly didn't find any oxidization, maybe a little bit, but not enough to actually say it oxidizes. So maybe do a little bit more research on that if you're worried about that. In terms of settling into fine lines, it's the same thing. It will settle a little bit for me, just around my laugh lines, but other than that, it really doesn't settle. And similar to the Bobbi Brown, it doesn't settle into my pore area or anything like that. It is quite forgiving with my dry patches. It's flawless so the Armani is really flawless it does have alcohol in quite a high percentage right at the top of the ingredient list which is another reason I'm hesitating to purchase it but I haven't found any irritation from that one I probably will purchase it I'm just holding off at the moment but that for me comes in fourth place now in third place and you may be surprised by this one but in third place I have 
the Huda Beauty Luminous Matte Foundation. This is quite an interesting one because the, the biggest con with this foundation is blendability. Like it's really thick, you guys. If I've done a whole video on this as well, so do watch that if you're interested in this foundation. But it's a very thick foundation. And when it comes to blending out, it can dry quite quickly. It can not dry, it's not the right word. It can set down rather quickly. So you have to work quick to blend that in. And what I found with this is that the easiest way to blend this in is really to work in sections on your face. So you apply a little bit to, let's say, this cheek, blend it out, then apply a little bit here, blend it out, and so on. So if you work in sections, you'll be fine, no issues. But if you're someone who will dot it all over your face and then go to blend it, by the time you know you finish the side, finish the side, this here, and you come to your forehead, it has set down and it's very hard to just budge. However, the initial application aside, this is amazing especially for a very full coverage foundation. Like this one seriously has just amazing coverage. If you are someone who's really concerned about covering your acne spots, your pigmentation, this is full, full coverage. And it doesn't look foundation-y. So for example, the Bobbi Brown can look rather foundation-y. The Armani Luminous Silk can also look foundation especially if you really build it up to full coverage but i found that the huda beauty really doesn't and that's the reason why for me this is in third place is because of that beautiful almost like this natural finish but from a very full coverage foundation it's weird i love it i love it so for me it was definitely worth the purchase because of that the finish is stunning especially for something that full coverage. Also, it doesn't have any fragrance. It doesn't have any alcohol. It's amazing. My skin does not break out from this. It, there's no irritation. By the way, none of these foundations that I'm going to talk about gave me any irritation. None of them gave me breakouts, which is why they are my top favorite, of course. But yeah, amazing. I The shade is also a really good match for me. This is the shade 320G. It is perhaps a little bit too warm, just a hint, but it works really well for me in winter and it also works really well for me in fall as well as spring, just you know when the weather is changing. So for most of the year, I can actually wear this shade and I love it. It's fantastic. Again, I've done a whole video on this, so I won't go into too much detail, so check it out. Now, in second place, I have the foundation that I've recently reviewed for you guys, and that is the Cogen Do Aqua Foundation. This is not a matte foundation. This is more of an emollient, more of a dewy foundation. It's not too dewy though, because if, if formulas are a little bit more dewy than this, then my combination skin can't really handle it. But I think this is the perfect amount of dewiness for my combination skin and i love how natural this looks for those of you who are looking for a slightly emollient hydrating foundation formula that's going to be really forgiving if you have dry patches it's also not going to be bad for your oily areas and it looks super skin like this is it oh my god I have done a video on this. By the way, when I reviewed this foundation and I did a whole wear test, I was actually having a pretty bad skin day and still this made my skin look absolutely beautiful. It wears really well. I was not expecting that. I thought that perhaps by the six hour mark, this will oxidize on me or you know it would significantly fade, but it didn't last all day barely any fading yes it does settle in my laugh lines a little bit like just the rest of the foundations it does not settle into my pore area um, it is particularly forgiving for my dry patches especially on my forehead i tend to get dry patches and this formulation just does not emphasize that whatsoever i love wearing it an excellent option for those of you who are looking for sheer to medium coverage and something very skin like this is it and then my holy grail my absolute favorite foundation in the last two years hands down and it has not budged i have been obsessed with it since last year since i discovered it is 
the Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation. And if you've been watching a lot of my videos and if, you, if you've especially seen my description, you would have seen that I wear this foundation all the time. Probably in most of my videos here on YouTube, I've been wearing this. I love it. I love everything about it. Well, it does have alcohol, it does have fragrance. I don't like those two aspects, but everything else I love about it. It doesn't, of course, irritate my skin. It doesn't break me out. It has this beautiful radiant finish. Like, this is not a matte foundation, but it's also not a dewy foundation. It's a satin finish. It is a slightly hydrating, slightly glowy finish, but it still keeps your oils in check and it's very smoothing. It uh, can be built up to very close to full coverage. I wouldn't say this is full, full coverage, not like the Huda Beauty or the Armani or even the Bobbi Brown. Those foundations were very full coverage. I feel like I would say this is medium plus coverage. It looks, whew, you guys, this foundation is stunning on camera. I, I wear it often on camera, so I can tell you that it's beautiful on camera and it's equally as beautiful in real life. Many times when I've received compliments on my skin, what am I wearing, what foundation am I wearing, it's often been this one. I just, I can't pinpoint exactly what it is about the finish that makes it so beautiful. I feel like that the best word I can describe for this is creaminess it gives my skin that creamy look i don't i don't know that's the best way i know to describe it it's the creamy glow that i get it's with this it's banging i wear this for when i'm going out i wear it to work it lasts all day yes it does settle a little bit in my fine lines but that's it it's pretty forgiving for my dry patches as well and my shade in this three warm olive which by far is probably one of the best shade matches i have ever come across for my skin tone it has that warmth that my skin has it has the yellow undertones it also has that olive undertone that isn't actually too cool because one of the issues that i often run with with olive foundations is that they often run very cool tone whereas my skin is most definitely warm and it has a great balance of olive and warmth and it's amazing now those were my top five favorite foundations in the last two years i have really enjoyed wearing all of them now i do have two runner-ups that i quickly want to mention First off is the Smashbox foundation. So I've had this foundation for a long time actually. This is a Smashbox Studio Skin 24 hour wear hydrating foundation. I love this for summer. For summer, it is perfection. It gives you that slightly matte look. It helps to control the oil. And even if I sweat during the day, because the summer it can get really hot and I'll sweat around my mouth area, it doesn't go weird or anything like that. So I really love it for particularly during summer. It's also very forgiving during winter as well. So it doesn't dry out my skin or anything like that. It doesn't have alcohol, it doesn't have fragrance. So from an ingredient perspective, I really like this. It has a beautiful smoothing and yet semi-natural look to the skin. Minimal settling into my laugh lines, no settling into my pores relatively forgiving for my dry patches. It will stick to my dry patches if my dry patch is particularly bad. But other than that, it doesn't stick that much. The one thing I do find quite frustrating with this is the shade match. I've got three bottles of this, three shades. I've got 3.02, which is by far the closest that I've found. 3.02 is still a little bit too warm for me, particularly in winter, but I can still make it work. I can still wear it. I haven't yet found the right shade for me for my winter shade. 3.18 is a very good summer shade for me, particularly if I've tanned quite a bit. So today, for example, I'm wearing a combination of both. I'm wearing 3.18, which is a darker shade on the perimeter of my face. And then I'm wearing 3.02, sort of in the cheek, middle of forehead and the mouth area. So I'm wearing these two at the moment. If you know the right shade for this, 
for my skin tone please let me know it is a little bit frustrating especially because in new zealand we don't have the entire range so it's very hard to choose and i've kind of given up on it just because i have other foundations that i really love as well lastly i also want to give a shout out to the nars tinted moisturizer i've tried a few tinted moisturizers tinted products this year and by far this has been my favorite my shade is saint moritz i feel like for my combo skin at least it gives me that hydration but it also doesn't make me look too greasy like i feel like for my skin type this really strikes a very good balance the shade is also a really good match it's not perfect it's a little bit too light but I can still wear it. Again, I have done a whole video on this. So if you're interested in the skin tint, please do check that out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I am planning on doing a few more top favorite categories. So if you're interested in a particular category, please let me know in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in my next one. See ya.